Lisa Flamingo. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I'm going to be walking you through how I painted this flamingo. Oh my gosh, so many feathers. And along with a few bees. It was actually one of you guys who came up with the flamingo name. And now that's what I call them. I'm working in acrylics on this piece and on a Frederick's Convexo canvas. These canvases are the beveled edge ones, which are so great. I love them for the rounds. They're my favorite, favorite canvases for painting round because you're not gonna frame them. You're gonna hang them as they are love them. No, I'm not being paid for this. I just get really excited about these canvases. And I am using Liquitex acrylic paints on these. If you're supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover. So make sure to head over and check that out. I've started with a canvas that I have gessoed and then sanded so it was really smooth. I misted the entire thing with a spray bottle so that it is very wet to start with. Now I'm applying black and white acrylic paint. This is the Liquitex Basics. I'm using a spray bottle to go right over that. You can see I'm pushing that paint around with the water from the spray bottle. Once I get that on there, I'm going to take the hair dryer and I'm gonna push the paint around even more. You can control a lot of what's going to happen with where your lines and water or paint runs go based on how you push that around with the hair dryer. Now be aware, when you're using this much water, you are lessening the adhesiveness of the paint. This is going to require a varnish to make sure that it doesn't rub off if somebody were to, well, you should varnish your acrylic paintings anyway, but it'll keep it protected so that you don't have to worry about it flaking off or having any issues like that later on. Because this is a lot of water to be using with the acrylics. But it gives you a great look. You can see my camera was sliding down. I am the tripod, I didn't, or the boom mic that I was using, I didn't realize that that was happening. So, whoops, sorry about that. But I'm applying a second layer here, doing the same thing that I did before, but now I'm controlling where I want my darks and lights. Too bad it's not on camera and you guys can't really see what's happening. You'll see the next layer better though. I did the same thing. I pushed that paint around and the water around with the hairdryer. Now the thing with the hair dryer that you do want to watch, don't put it too close to the canvas. And if you've got thick chunks of paint, you can actually cause that acrylic to kind of bubble up. So be very careful. You don't want to keep it right on top of the paint there. So here's my third layer where I'm controlling, I need a darker area to go behind the flamingo. So I'm adding more black here. I want to leave some of that white really bright, but I want this area where the flamingo is going to go. That needs to be a lot darker. Again, just controlling where those runs go based or by how I'm using the hairdryer. Now that I have that background done, when it's completely dry, I've drawn my image out onto a piece of tracing paper. Then I tape the tracing paper to the canvas and use transfer paper to transfer the image onto the canvas itself. You can see I've got that white outline of where the flamingo is going to go. I'm then painting everything in with a medium gray. Once that dries, I use the same transfer and trace tracing paper method to transfer the face on. This way I don't have to keep redrawing the same thing over and over again. I just draw it out once on another piece of paper and then use tracing and transfer paper every time I want to transfer that portion of the image over. It keeps everything nice and clean and really saves a lot of time. So now I'm working on the beak. I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible as I work, but there are going to be some bad layers as I'm, I'm working, some seriously bad layers. So I'm just loosely blocking in approximately where my highlights and where my shadows are going to go. I don't need the colors to be exact, I just need to be close. Now I'm blocking in the darker portions that are going to go under the light feathers first. If I don't get these dark enough when I put the light feathers over them, the light feathers aren't going to show up enough. So you can see I've got that fairly dark, then I used that tracing and transfer paper method again, transferred the image back over it so I could see the direction I wanted those feathers to go. And now I'm using a smaller round brush to sketch in the lighter feathers. You can see how much those show up now because I put the dark color down first. I have to make sure that these are all about the right length. I have to keep looking at my reference photo. They need to be the right length. They need to be the right width as well. And they have to go in the right direction. See, I'm glazing some color over this and then I'll come back on top with more highlights. And when I use the term glaze, all I mean is I'm using a lot of water with a small amount of paint so that I get a very translucent mixture just to tint the color. Now 
and I worked on the head first just so I didn't rush anything. If I, I have a tendency to want to work on everything all at once, all the feathers and the head, and I end up losing my place. And I knew this one was going to be a challenge. So I only drew out the head first just to make sure I got that nearly complete before I moved on. So my second day of painting on this, I am just going to block in where these feathers go. And I'm thinking of this in terms of abstract shapes because this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This is an absolute mess of color and shapes and none of these really look like feathers at this point. So I just have to trust my reference photo and copy what I see. If you start to get lost and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this doesn't look like feathers, flip your work upside down. It'll trick your brain into seeing the shapes correctly instead of trying to force your brain to see feathers that don't look like feathers until you back away from it. I'm worrying a little bit more about my values here than I am the actual colors. I wanna make sure I've got my lights where they need to go and the darks where those need to go. I'm gonna come back over this and refine details and colors and values even more later, but the values right now are what I'm more focused on. This is gonna make my next day of painting much easier just by getting these blocked in. Because even though I had already drawn these out where I wanted them, it is so easy to lose your place. There's just, there's so many feathers. So I'm just going to keep blocking these in. Again, they don't have to be exact. I just need to be close. When you're drawing something like this or painting something like this, you want the general shapes right. You want the eye in the right place. You want the beak in the right place, the shape of the head. Those things matter. If your feather is half an inch off, honestly, nobody's going to know the difference. Go for close. But if you're a little bit off, don't stress yourself out about it. Now the big thing here on this one was the lighting. What I'm mostly focusing on is making sure I've got the darks and the lights where they need to go. And it seems weird at this point. When I was painting up close, even me, I'm used to painting all the time. This shouldn't seem odd, but because the lighting was so striking, when you're up close to it, it doesn't look right. When you back away, then it's like, okay, this makes sense now. So this is another one, trust your reference photo and keep backing away from your work. That's just a good habit to get into anyway. A lot of things that we paint don't look very good up close. This one in the end, now that it's finished, yeah, it, this one does look good up close, but while I was doing this stage, it did not. So definitely good habit to get into, back away from your work. So you can see I've got all of these loosely blocked in and I'm gonna call that a day. I'm on to my third day of painting on this, which is actually the fourth day, I think I, did the first day was just the background but I'm now refining these I'm coming through I'm paying attention to my cal my colors in addition to the value I did hype up my contrast quite a bit for my reference photo I wanted this to be much stronger so my colors are a lot more bold and I'm just going little detail one feather at a time one of the reasons that I didn't do one feather, have it completed before I moved on to the next feather with this piece was that there were so many feathers, I was having a hard time judging my values. Until I get the feathers around them painting it, painted in, it was really hard for me to tell where I wanted all of these other colors to be on the previous feather. So it was just easier for me to kind of block everything in loosely. That way when I came back on this day, judging my values was a lot easier. And because I have all of these feathers blocked in, I'm not getting lost on which feather is which. It's already blocked in there. I did that the, the day before, which made this day much more enjoyable. And this is where everything started really coming together and looking much, much more realistic. I'm using a combination of Taclon bristled brushes with the rounds on those several sizes and I'm using a synthetic hog hair liner brush a number four and for the tiny tiny details I'm going to switch over to a number zero golden taclon bristled liner brush here's that number four remember you can control how thin or thick your line is by how hard you push on your paintbrush if you push very hard you're going to get a, a much thicker line than if you're barely letting the tip of those bristles touch the canvas now, one of the reasons that I want my canvases to be so smooth is for this sort of thing, this little detail. If this canvas had a lot of tooth, if it was very rough, getting this sort of detail would be nearly impossible. It would be very rough. You'd be seeing the grain of the canvas. It'd be hard to have the paintbrush go into all the little crevices. But because I put a coat of gesso on this and sanded it to a smooth finish, I'm able to get that fine detail. 
Now you can also buy canvases that are very, very smooth. With these Convexo canvases from Fredericks, they have a little bit more tooth. It's more like their red label canvas, and that is more tooth than I like. So all I have to do to make it more like the blue label that I prefer is to put that coat of gesso and sand it lightly. And here I'm focusing on getting that contrast even higher. Look at how light those feathers are where the light is hitting them. That is really important for this piece. So you don't want to be afraid when you're working on something like this where the lighting is everything. Don't be afraid to get your contrast really high in there. A little bit more details on these back feathers, getting those lighter areas in. Now, one thing that you're not going to see on this video is I am going to come back through with some blue to add details on the bee, the wings for the bees and for some of the shadows in the flamingo himself. And that was just done with glazing. And I did not think to turn the camera on for that because I didn't think I was going to do as much as I ended up doing. So getting some final details on these highlights, you can see how I'm really making those bright areas pop. And it seems scary when you're up close to your canvas. This is where you want to keep backing away from it because when you back up, everything comes together. So now onto one of the bees. I'm using a liner brush. I'm just blocking in where the black areas go. Very messy. Once that's in, I've switched to the zero Taclon bristle liner brush, drawing in all the little hairs. And then I will glaze yellow over it for the brighter areas. And then I will come back through and glaze some of the burgundy colors that I used in the flamingo for the shadows. You can see here where I've used more of the blue that you did not see in the video, but there is my finished flamingo. Thanks for watching again if you are supporters over on Patreon. The two hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, our Q&A videos each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. All of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you haven't noticed, I am not only obsessed with flamingos, I'm obsessed with bees. I even got a bee to go in my camera bag, and then my husband stole the bee and named him Jeremy. He finally gave him back, but he came with a name. Yeah, my husband's as insane as I am. And I know you guys keep asking to see him on video. He has not been cooperating with that at all. But I promise he's not just a figment of my imagination. Because I wouldn't have come up with the name Jeremy all on my own. Okay, maybe I would have. <laughs>